Hello. It's been a long time. I have been occupied as usual with with my duties uh, of headship, which is why I have not been able to uh, make any videos for about two months now. Um, there have been one or two people who have uh, asked me when is my next video coming and I have said it's coming like Christmas uh, but I have never really had the time. Today or rather uh, to be more accurate tonight I have finally found the time to actually sit with you and to make uh, another video. Now this particular video that I'm going to make obviously this is going to be in celebration of Valentine's Day and uh, this is going to be a, a video in which I am going to talk about um, an English poet who is not very well known although I think he should be. I think there are some who are really interested um, in Renaissance literature. They may already be aware of him. His name is Richard Barnfield. Um, but apart from that, I don't think too many people actually know about Richard Barnfield. Um, and I thought that it might be a good idea to, to read um, a sonnet by Richard Barnfield um, to mark Valentine's Day. Now, what really uh, I wish to do is to um, talk about Richard Barnfield a little bit um, and then to discuss how, um, you know, we can look at this particular poem. I have to confess that I wasn't aware of Richard Barnfield till I came across this book of poems, which I picked up from um, a bookshop here in Kolkata in November last year. Um, and, uh, and so this is called uh, Love Speaks Its Name, Gay and Lesbian Love Poems. Um, this, was, this was the only copy that was available. So I, I immediately snapped it up and I asked them if they had other copies uh, in case I wanted to give it to other people as present. Um, they didn't. So, so this is the only copy that remained. Anyway, I'm lucky that I got it. Um, and while I was going through this book, um, I came across, of course, you know, um, the sonnets by Shakespeare and by Michelangelo, um, uh, Sappho and, and various other people, um, even, even a lot of modern poets. And also, I found a couple of poems by Richard Barnfield. Now, Richard Barnfield um, is somebody who is sometimes regarded as perhaps, now this is just all, um, you know, uh, some kind of speculation. So there is no actual historical evidence to prove this. But some people believe that Richard Barnfield was probably the rival poet that we uh, read about in Shakespeare's sonnets. So he could be the rival poet. Um, Richard Barnfield um, certainly is one of the first people to have praised Shakespeare in writing. Um, you know, so, so, so the first documented praise of Shakespeare as a poet um, actually comes from Richard Barnfield himself. Not much is known about Richard Barnfield. There is um, uh, a Wikipedia entry on him, which you are welcome to read up. I'm not going to um, sort of repeat uh, the information there. What I will simply do is um, certainly uh, give you some of the information, um, which is that Richard Barnfield is primarily known for three books of poems, out of which I shall primarily talk about two. The first book of poems um, is called The Affectionate Shepherd, which was published in November 1594. And the second one, which came in January 1595, so within a space of two months. This is called Cynthia with certain sonnets. Now, uh, the sonnet that I'm going to read out today is actually from this book, which was published in 1595, um, Cynthia with certain sonnets. The sonnet that I'm going to read out is sonnet number 14. Um, this particular sonnet, um, you would be interested to know, was first anthologized in the Penguin Book of Homosexual Verse in 1987. But um, after that, it, it seems to have, you know, sunk without a trace until the poem is revived again, the sonnet is revived again 
in this particular anthology. Richard Banfield is very clearly influenced by um, poets such as uh, uh, Virgil, uh, Bion, Theocritus, yes. So he's actually influenced by ancient Greek and Roman poetry. And I think it is also um, ancient Greek and Roman mythology that is of, of interest to him because you would be, um, you know, I'm going to tell you that both The Affectionate Shepherd and Cynthia with Certain Sonnets, both these books are actually addressed to Ganymede. So, uh, you know, those of you who are familiar with Shakespeare's play As You Like It, which, by the way, is, is uh, you know, probably written in 1599. So about uh, five to six years, uh, you know, four to five years, as it were, um, after uh, Richard Barnfield wrote these poems, after he published these anthologies. Um, in As You Like It, as you very well remembered, that uh, Rosalind, when she, um, you know, escapes with, with her cousin, into the forest of Arden, um, she dresses herself as a man and she takes on the name of Ganymede. Now, those of us who um, have read Greek mythology will know that Ganymede, of course, was uh, the very, very beautiful boy whom the Greek god Zeus kidnapped um, and made him his cup bearer. That is what they called it in those days. So Ganymede was Zeus's cup bearer, the cup which contained wine. Uh, so, so that is something which we know from Greek mythology. Um, and Shakespeare, when he dresses up Rosalind as Ganymede, surely what Shakespeare is channeling is the idea of a very beautiful boy or a very beautiful young man because Rosalind herself is supposed to be very pretty. So therefore, Rosalind is being uh, presented as a very, very good looking young man. Now, the homoeroticism actually gets even more intense in the play as you like it, um, you know, as, as you may remember, because um, Rosalind um, is, is in love with this young man called Orlando. Um, and Orlando is, is running around the Forest of Arden, you know, sort of writing Rosalind's name, uh, you know, sort of carving his name into the trunks of trees and everything. And, um, and Ganymede says, oh, you, you seem to be in love with this uh, young woman. And Orlando says, yes, I am. And then Ganymede, in effect, Rosalind, but Ganymede, basically says that, oh, you know, uh, if you want to woo this young woman, then, um, you know, practice wooing the young woman with me. Imagine that I am the young woman. Now, do you see what is happening over here? You have one young man courting another young man, pretending that the other young man is a woman. I will just ask you to think about it for a bit. So, so clearly there, there is an enormous amount of homoeroticism uh, that is uh, sort of, you know, energizing that, that particular, uh, that particular um, element of the plot. Um, when we talk about queerness in Shakespeare's plays, we usually talk about Twelfth Night. But I think this particular uh, part of As You Like It, I think, is, is, is pretty queer as well. But somehow we don't talk about it very much. Be that as it may, um, what I would therefore want to do is read this particular poem by Richard Barnfield. Now, uh, just, just one more word uh, before I actually read the poem, which is uh, The Affectionate Shepherd, when it was published in November 1594, um, it was um, greeted with some amount of skepticism and some kind of criticism as well, because a lot of people actually detected in it um, the sense of homoeroticism. Um, now, when uh, Richard Barnfield published his second volume of poems, Cynthia with Certain Sonnets, in the preface to the second volume, he actually said in so many words that, oh, you know, I, I think it is really unfortunate 
um, that that some people seem to think that I'm gay. He doesn't, of course, use that term, but that is what he basically means, is that I think that it is really unfortunate that a lot of people seem to think that I'm gay. Um, but uh, but no, no, it's, it's, it's got nothing to do with my sexuality at all. I was simply trying to um, copy the style of, of Virgil and of Theocritus. Uh, so therefore, what he's basically saying is that, you know, my style is, is derivative. Um, there is nothing original about what I'm writing. Now, look at the way in which um, by saying that my style and my content is derivative, he is actually attempting to deflect any aspersions on his sexuality. However, when he publishes his next, uh, when he publishes, you know, Cynthia, the book in which uh, he <coughs> basically says that, <coughs> please don't think that I'm gay, um, this book also is full of poetry. Um, which uh, which is addressed to a young man. And this, I think, is, is a classic example of that. Very appropriate for Valentine's Day. And you will realize why it is appropriate when I read it. Okay, so here goes. This is um, a sonnet. This is sonnet number 14 from Cynthia with Certain Sonnets, published in 1595 by Richard Barnfield. <coughs> here. Hold this glove. This milk white chevril glove, not quaintly overwrought with curious knots, not decked with golden spangs nor silver spots, yet wholesome for thy hand, as thou shalt prove. Ah, no, sweet boy, place this glove near thy heart, wear it and lodge it still within thy breast. So shalt thou make me most unhappy blessed. So shalt thou rid my pain and ease my smart. How can that be, perhaps? Thou wilt reply. A glove is for the hand, not for the heart. Nor can it well be proved by common art, nor reasons ruled. To this thus answer I. If thou from glove dost take away the G, then glove is love, and so I send it thee. So, what do you think? Uh, so, what he is actually saying is uh, to this young man, he is saying that I am giving you this uh, glove, this milk white chevril glove. Now, chevril is is a kind of it's um, it's it's a, a kid skin, right? So therefore, very very delicate, very soft, um, and even stretchable. So therefore, chevril is is a, a very very expensive material to use for a glove, and this very expensive glove is something that Richard Barnfield, or indeed the poet, um, is giving to this young man. He says, "Place place the glove." near the breast, hold it to your breast and, and don't wear it. So when the young man is going to say, but why should I keep it close to my breast because it is meant for my hand? He says that, no, 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 what you should do is you should actually place it there because if you remove the G from love, G from glove, then it becomes love. And that is what I'm sending to you. So therefore the glove becomes, um, you know, the, the emissary, as it were, the messenger, the, the carrier of the message of love that Richard Barnfield actually intends for this young man. Um, so what we really find, therefore, is that uh, he seems to be quite clear about where his affection lies. He seems to be quite clear about exactly uh, who the audience for the poem is. Um, and yet, uh, you know, he is going to say that, no, 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 please, please don't think that, you know, I'm, I'm homosexual or, or, you know, I'm a, I'm a catamite, uh, as, as they used to call them in those days. Um, please don't think of me like that. But, but again, he continues to write these poems that are very, very homoerotic. Um, so that is it. This is my fairly short video for Valentine's Day. Um, what I shall try to do is um, I'm going to give you the details of this book. 
um, uh, in the in the description below the video. Um, and uh, who knows, maybe you can order it um, on, on Amazon or on Flipkart and then maybe you can enjoy the other poems in the volume as well. Have a happy Valentine's Day. Hope to see you again very soon.